do 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 here we are uh, here we are all right so look i'm trying to get it all together you know i'm here trying to make some magic and trying not to forget whatever I said I was going to do, that I had slotted for me to do in order to make some magic. And I feel like camera too is just so much more <laughs> in the way, it wants love too, it wants the Facebook love. All right, so let's start with the good old shoulder roll, yes, to kick it off, so look. I wanted to wear, you know, a springish color for you, even though it often does not feel like spring. But today is a sunny day. I feel like the sunshine is coming into my office and I'm here for all of this. Hi, Yoli82, shoulder roll. Thanks for tuning in, yes. So you know, thank you, doll. Listen, I really enjoy today's ensemble because I am a sleeve girl and I get that from my mama. My mama loves a good sleeve, okay? I feel like growing up, some of her most epic pieces, right? Because she was a seamstress and a, and a fashion designer. So she was, she's always here for a good sleeve. Oh yes, she is. So look, while we're, while we're chitter chatting, um, I'm gonna put today's topic on Instagram, let's see. Okay, look, cause you know I'd be struggling and you know I'm not wearing my glasses. So I'm gonna call, that reminds me, I'm gonna call Scout. You know what? Yes, I will call Scout, but I'm still not gonna wear contacts, not for 20, 30 minutes of going live and then I just could wear my glasses the rest of the day. No, I'm saving those contacts. All right, even coach got a coach. That's the name of today's session even coach got a coach you know you know okay so and then i'm gonna pin it because you know i'm learning and growing and developing hey now all right so you know i like to have a little chitter chat before we jump in so today's chitter chat is about routines and i'd love to hear from you guys how you're implementing different routines, especially with Rona. Maybe there's a Rona routine happening. Um, but I've never been much for routines just because I don't really like routine. I don't, I guess I don't like it that much. But, you know, I, I would say I have a loose routine. But to say, you know, I begin every morning at X time and then before I do anything else, I do this or this or this, not really. Now, as far as things that are routine, do they get done at some point in the day every day? Most likely, yeah. You know, my I would say this, right? So my baby is on a tighter schedule than me because my schedule is my bleh. But... I do plan my days out every single day. Um, and I think that, you know, when we have like a corporate job, we plan our days out some days more tightly than others. And I think that they're built sometimes around our meeting schedule, right? And then all the meetings get put on your calendar. Maybe you have some spaces that are blocked no matter what, because you're taking your power back and then you schedule around this robust meeting schedule because depending on where you work, maybe you have what I, what I and I think many of us like to call a meeting culture where you have a meeting for the meeting about the meeting. Um, there are some organizations that have stepped away from that, but I have found many places that I've worked and you know gone in on behalf of another organization, many of them have meeting cultures and now, I bet you with Rona, we're getting away from this idea of having this meeting culture where we're having a meeting for the meeting for the meeting about the meeting uh, because everyone has the same complaint. They're tired of spending so much time in meetings because they can't get any work done. And so then we build routine around what is typically happening in our day. And I know for me, there's certain things that are going to happen at some point in the day. I just don't know when it's going to happen. And 
I also think that if I added a little bit more routine in my mix, it would probably make a difference. But what I do do at the behest and request of my coach is planning out my day every single day. I start planning it the night before. And then I um, button up and tighten up the plan in the morning before I open my email. Because I find, especially being um, a corporate Nista of before, a lot of times my emails sometimes would drive my day, which would then decrease productivity. So I plan my day before I open email. And then as I've shared on other, you know, day-to-day -day with Dorothy sessions, I, you know, slot out, you know, anywhere from two to six things that I can do ideally in 10 minutes or less so that I can still maximize my day, still feel productive, and then break the day up between those two or three big rocks that I have because I've cut down my schedule significantly because I'm a single mom and I have a baby. You know, she was 12. I think I could get work done, but I don't know, right? Because I don't have a 12-year-old. I'm not sure. Maybe they're more needy than I think. Um, but, you know, with a one-year-old, you got to be flexible. All right. Hey, Vibes Creative Art Space. Hey, girl. Hey. Thanks for joining. So look, before I jump in, me and Bay went to Vibes Creative Art Space to get our date night kit. Look, it was so much fun. I had so much fun. And plus, I'm kind of creative-ish, artsy-ish. So I had a ton of fun, you know, doing this trap paint and sip. I don't know if it was supposed to be part of a trap paint and sip, but I made it a trap and paint because I haven't had a chance to go to the trap and paint. And so we watched a trap and paint on YouTube so that we could feel like we were with the peeps. Um, and then we just listened to like trap music, hip hop and rap. But if you know my boyfriend, <laughs> trap and anything, don't go together with him. They're like, he did what? <laughs> so it was a fun date night for sure. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. So let's go ahead and jump in. That's probably enough chitter chat for now. So today's topic, even coach got a coach, even coach got a coach. And this topic, I think, came to me in listening to um, just a couple different, you know, podcasts and attending these different conferences and webinars that are available now because, you know, many of them are free and it's really encouraging to be able to download this content and take the time to engage in this self-development. And I have really been intentional about my development during Rona because while I don't feel like I have the way time happens now, it just feels different. It doesn't feel like I have extra time, but time feels different. And so I'm being intentional with that difference and kind of flowing with that and, and engaging in this self-development. Plus, how can I get up here and tell y'all Time now is self-development time. You know, don't wait for outside to open back up. And then I'm sitting here waiting for outside to open back up. No, 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 no. I'm engaging in my own self-development. And so I was thinking about it and, you know, this, uh, I'm, I'm reading a couple different books, which I've always been like this. I'll read like two or three books at once, which makes, makes it all take longer. But I'm learning and developing through all of them, right? And so, you know, one of the books I was reading about reading is talking about just the culture of working, right? And the importance of being a strong leader, the importance of being a good manager. Uh, because some, we're all leaders, right? So we could be a leader and not be a manager. We could be a manager and not be a leader. We could be a manager and a leader, right? So depending on how we wanna show up, that's really gonna determine what we're going to need. And when I think about the best managers, the best managers are also leaders. And whether we are managing and or leading, doing one or the other, in the end, we still need coaching and development in order to be the best leader that we can be or and the best manager that we can be. Even coach got a coach, right? And so the, the two people that come to mind that are not in corporate, but I think it's important to list them because when we think about them and how they dominate in their space, 
you would think these individuals would not have a coach. Like, why do they need a coach for it? They are dominating. But Oprah has a coach. And Serena Williams has a coach. Both of these powerhouses have coaches, right? And they are both leaders. The amount of influence that they have is absolutely staggering, right? It would blow anyone away, the impact, the influence. And when you know that you're that impactful and that influential, why wouldn't you take the time to engage in that next step and get the coaching that you need? It's not like therapy or counseling, which I also think those elements are extremely important because sometimes you don't need coaching, you need therapy. And sometimes you need therapy and you need coaching, right? So finding this balance, and even though you might be at the top of your game, and for you, maybe there's no competition, you're dominating in your space, which is amazing. That doesn't mean that the coach does not need a coach. That doesn't mean that we are beyond learning. We are beyond growing, evolving, and transforming. We can always improve. We can always get better. And when you think about it, right, there's two stats that I want to share. I've got my notes here for y'all, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not just out here, just I'm prepared. So the first one is the manager has a key role in the organization. Gallup has found that managers have 70% influence over the climate of their team. And let me tell you something, y'all. I wasn't in corporate for two minutes. I was in corporate for a long, long time, almost two decades. This is facts, big facts, right? Our manager can absolutely be the game changer. Let me tell you something. You could be at a job where you're not loving the job, or maybe sometimes you may not be loving the people, or the mission and vision maybe don't totally align for you. But if you've got some work experience under your belt and you have a kick-ass manager, let me tell you something. You are going to stick it out just a little bit longer in order to study under and learn and grow and develop under the tutelage of this manager, right? Because if you've got a little experience under your belt, you know how challenging it can be to have and find and work for a remarkable manager or a remarkable leader. Because this whole leadership thing, this whole journey, because it's such a process, and because it can be challenging and because sometimes people don't want to do that work in that self-reflection, that's how we can get so many managers and leaders that are in this position of influence where they're now impacting other people's lives. Sometimes we can get the ones that just aren't that great. And it can be an absolute game changer in how we experience work every day. Because keep in mind, we spend like 25% of our life at work, right? If we think about how many hours the typical work week is for most Americans, most Americans, as much as we'd like to think they work like 50 to 75, most Americans work 35 to 40 hours a week. And so when you add all that up, assuming that they ret retire around 65-ish, a quarter of that lifetime, the working lifetime, 18 to 65, a quarter of that is spent at work. That's a lot of time to be spending at a place where you have crummy manager after crummy manager after crummy manager, or you are the crummy manager, right? Before the crummy manager that they had before and the crummy manager that they're going to have after you. This is a lot, right? 60% of employees who have left their jobs said it was because of, because of the manager. And I've always said, long before I even left corporate, people don't quit companies. They quit bosses. Occasionally, people may quit a boss, uh, a company, but more often than not, they're quitting their boss because they picked that company because they thought it would be great for them. But the way that we experience a company is through our leadership, right? The company itself is usually fine. It is the leadership that makes the company feel like, you know, we can't align and then grind. Right. It is the leadership experience that we're having with our manager or our manager's peers that make us say, you know what, this probably isn't the place for me. So there's three reasons why managers, leaders, they need a coach. Even coach got a coach. And part of what managers are called to do is to coach their direct reports.
right? That's part of the role of being a manager. And when we're in leadership roles, we have influence. We are able to make an impact. And so we want to be thoughtful about the impact that we're going to have, right? As I said at the very beginning, Oprah is dominating, right? I don't even know that Oprah has competition. And so when you have no competition, you dominate, right? Domination is the, you know, that, that gives you immunity, right? From having to succumb to a lot of the things that everyone else might have to deal with. However, even though she's dominating, she's still got a coach. Yes, yes. So why if the lady who's dominating and is a billionaire, if she's got a coach, what makes us think as managers and leaders leading from every seat that we sit in that we don't need a coach? In what world? Like how, right? Do we want to be ordinary? Because ordinary people will say, oh, I don't need a coach. I'm fine. I'm, I'm doing okay. No one's complaining. You know, I, I think I've got it and I read a lot. Okay. But the remarkable person, like the Oprah, like the Serena, they take that step back and say, you know what? Even though I'm coaching others, I'm helping others, I'm influencing, I'm leading, I'm managing, I still need a coach. And I'm going to give you three reasons why we all need a coach. Even when we're the ones coaching, even coach got a coach, right? I have a coach. I got multiple coaches for different reasons. But even I have a coach and I am a coach. So let's go ahead and get into it. And friendly reminder, if I have just slid in and you're like, who is she? Who are you? I love those sleeves, but who are you? I'm Dorothy Enriquez. I'm the communication strategist. I help ordinary people become remarkable leaders. Ordinary people like me, ordinary people like you become remarkable. Ordinary people will say, I don't need no coach. I'm fine. I read a lot. I listen to podcasts. And that's great. Right? But when we're stepping away from ordinary towards remarkable, that's when we start take, taking things to the next level. That's when we start really digging in, going in introspectively and saying, what else? What more can I do? What else needs to be done? Because not only are we engaged in our work, we're engaged in our calling, and we're engaged in our life to say, what else? At the point where we stop saying, what else? We stop growing we stop learning, and we stop evolving. So let's not do that. So let's jump into these three things. Let me see who we have here on Facebook. Jana, my Jana. Oh, shoulder roll, shoulder roll. Let's see, who else do we have so I can say hi? Be open to be a coach. You are so needed. Oh, I thank you, I thank you. Let's see what else we got. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. All right, so. Ready for my three, three elements or three reasons why, especially if we are in a role of management where we are impacting the lives of other people. Three reasons, okay, why we need a coach. Even coach got a coach. One, the higher you are in your organization, the less feedback you are going to get. And you might be thinking, well, why, right? Because you still have a boss. Even the CEO has a boss, right? But here's the thing, and this is what I have seen. So I have worked with plenty executives and folks who are not in the C-suite yet, right? But they're pretty close to it. So they are a director, a senior director, depending on how many levels are in the organization. And even at that level, they are finding it more and more difficult to get the feedback that they really need. And sometimes that creates distance between them and the ground level. Okay. So here's the thing. When we start to get high in our organization, the challenges arise causing the folks who are um, underneath us in the organizational structure and chart to give us feedback. It just makes it more challenging because there is this thing called power distance. Okay, so this would be like, I'm the kid, you're the mom, or I'm the kid and you're the dad. While yes, depending on how this child is brought up, they may give their parents feedback, but they may not. That's part of it, right? So there's, 
there's a fear element. If I give my boss feedback, what are they going to do? Because when we think about why we work, we work to be able to provide for ourselves ultimately, big picture, because most people don't work for free, right? So we're working to be able to provide for ourselves. And so if we think that that provision is gonna be in jeopardy, if we give the feedback or our ability to get promoted or receive the plum projects or get the approval to you know, relocate or you know, pursue this other opportunity, are we gonna give that feedback? Absolutely not, right? When there's power distance involved, the higher that you get, the less likely it is for you to get real feedback. Other barriers in this space include, I don't know what to tell you, right? If I go back to my simple like kid parent example, if I'm a kid, I don't know how to tell you to, to parent particularly. I may be able to give you some ideas about me, but I can't tell you how to parent because I'm not one. I'm seven. I can't really give you sound advice and guidance and I don't necessarily have the wisdom needed to guide you through this process. And so that also prevents employees or people that you influence from being able to speak up because they just don't know what to say, right? And then they don't know what's appropriate and inappropriate. And last but not least, even if they have things to say, they don't know how to make it actionable, right? especially when there's power distance. The more power distance there is, the more steps you are above the individual that you're soliciting feedback from, the less likely you are to get genuine feedback. This creates a gap, this creates a blind spot, and this then becomes a reason to fuel the need to have a coach. Because let me tell you something, your coach ain't gonna be scared of you. If anything, you might be scared of them. You know, so this is gonna be someone who will actually be able to give you some real feedback and some actionable, actionable feedback, and they'll be able to get the feedback from the people that you can't get it from. But here's a tip, if you're still feeling a little resistant, when you are soliciting feedback from people who you find that maybe they're afraid, they're not sure what to say, they're not sure how you will hear it or receive it or if it's actionable, what you can do to kick off is say something to the, to the effect of, you know, like what feedback do you have for me when it comes to X? Of course, give them a second and then say, what other people have told me are A and B, so that they have a frame of reference and then it reassures them, well, other people are telling you this, Maybe it's something that I agree with too, and I could just piggyback off of that instead of saying something new, or it lets me know that this thing that I have percolating in my mind, I can potentially share it without fear of you biting my head off. So that's a tip or trick that I always advise um, managers and leaders that I work with, especially when they're higher in the organization. Let's see, let me make sure. Shoulder roll, yes, ew, ew. All right, so that's number one. Number two. You have blind spots, leader, manager. You've got blind spots, you can't see yourself. We, the people who report to you, the people you're influencing, we can see you, but you can't see you. And so you don't always know, like clearly beyond a shadow of a doubt, how other people are experiencing you. And because of that, Ultimately, we don't know what we don't know, and that's okay. There's no way for us to know everything, and that is not the expectation. Therefore, this fuels something called unconscious incompetence. So to make it simple, oftentimes in things that we all do right, we oftentimes think we are a better driver than what we are, and then you've got your passengers holding on for dear life. We oftentimes think that we're a better cook than we are, and you've got people nodding their heads saying, yes, it's delicious. But really, they're like, uh-uh, I don't like it, right? Or we think that we are stronger and have a, a more, a, you know, adept prowess in an area than we actually do, ultimately. This happens in leadership as well. It happens in management all the time. And so what a coach can do is pull together a series of validated assessments to help us see us, to help us understand you know, our blind spots and to help us understand our strengths, our weaknesses. 
A strength overused can become a weakness. And there's always a dark side to the light side. What I mean by that is, let's say that, you know, you have a value in aesthetics, right? For example, because I'm using myself. So let's say you value aesthetics. You want things to like look pretty. You want things to be beautiful. You, you want to see the beauty in the world. You're outside appreciating the flowers, the way the clouds are coming together. This is wonderful. I love it. But then there can be a dark side to that because that could fan the flames for perfectionism, right? Oh my God, this just, this right here, this, because this isn't right on this document or this ebook or this product, I just, I will not release because it is not perfect. It needs to be beautiful. It needs to be perfect. So while there's the light side, sometimes depending on what it is, there can be a dark side as well. Our coaches can help us see this, help us navigate and coach us through it in a way that employees and peers cannot. And in some instances, it's because they're not equipped. But in other instances, honestly, they don't have the time. They didn't sign up for that. That's why coach got a coach. Because coach needs that extra development in order to go to that next level, right? And if we don't want the next level to be so unattainable that we get in our own way, we need someone who's going to help us fill in the blanks and close the gaps. And so when there's a gap between how we see ourselves, you know, as a driver, as a cook, as an artist, as a singer, whatever, when there's a gap between how we see ourselves and a gap between how others see us, what the coach does is allows us the opportunity through this coaching session program, whatever it has, to, whatever they have in store for us, to then close their perception gap so that there's more align, alignment and more congruence so that we can be the best leaders that we can be. And lastly, as managers, as leaders, oftentimes, because we have a need for speed, there's this requirement, and rightfully so, right, for alignment. People need to align. They need to align with the mission. They need to align with the vision. They need to align with the bottom line, right? And so there's this need for speed, a need for alignment, and a need for efficiency. When we ball all of this stuff up together, we get the corporate experience as many of us know it, which is go, go, go. Hurry, 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 hustle, 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 get busy. And then sometimes there's that whole hurry up and wait. But the pace, right? The pace is incredible. It will blow our minds at times how fast our companies and organizations move. But because of all of this, we tend to tell people what needs to be done. And that they need to execute, right? This needs to be done, go do. Here's the goal, make it happen. You're the best person for the job, I trust you. Go ahead and get it done, get it done, get it done. Do it with excellence, execute with brilliance. Yay! Management 101, getting stuff done with great employees. But here's the thing, when we do that and we're feeling pressed on all sides because we need the speed, we need the efficiency, more often than not, it creates the one-way communication and there's not a lot of dialogue. When there's not a ton of dialogue, that isn't going to help us become better. That's not going to help us lead more remarkably. It's not going to help push us in our strengths and push us to build up some of those weak areas that we know I could work on this and I could fix this. Ultimately, coaches help us in these areas because they can give us the tools. They can help us engage in skill acquisition so that we can show up powerfully, so that we can show up remarkably. Because guess what? Ordinary leaders sometimes aren't bothered, you know, that they're not getting a ton of feedback. Ordinary, ordinary managers aren't thinking about all of their blind spots. When we're living in this space of ordinary and this space of average, we know that we're telling, 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 but we're not trying to shift that whenever possible to having this dialogue that can be way more impactful. You know a company that's really good at having dialogue and has built it into the culture? Warby Parker. And that has been 
a game changer for them. Absolute game changer. Facebook as well, right? When we read these case studies about how these companies are getting things done, how they're moving things forward, and really being the visionaries and being original, it all boils down to how we show up as leaders. And if we're gonna be remarkable, we've gotta get coaching. We've got to, we've got to. So at the end of the day, as I share, do I coach? Absolutely. Are you looking for a coach? I might be your girl. But regardless, whether you go with me or some other leadership coach that you, that you know, that you've heard of, at least you're getting the coaching and development that you need. I just did a TikTok a couple weeks ago with a bunch of great lady leaders, right? Pick one of them. Whatever needs to be done in order to help you get to that next level, that's where it's at. That's what you want to do, sis. Let's do this. Let's take our leadership to the next level because why be ordinary when you could be remarkable? Yes? Yes? Okay. So quick announcement before I jump out of here. If you remember on April 10th, the plug dropped. That is my ebook, Become the Remarkable Leader Everyone Wants to Know, that has been flying off the virtual shelves. And let me tell you, hand over heart to everyone who has purchased their copy or you know, reached out to purchase copies on behalf of other folks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise dance. Okay, shoulder rolls for Jesus. Yes, shoulder rolls for Jesus. So look, a bunch of you asked about, oh, I want the hard copy. So what I have created is a bundle. It's called the Ultimate Leadership Bundle. So it is the hard copy of the plug, that also has a journal at the back so that you could continue to document your leadership journey even after you have finished the plug, right? It's beautiful, I love it. It includes the digital copy, it includes the um, audio companion and you know, you know, a 20 minute coaching session with yours truly. This is valued at 150, but for the first 10 people, I will offer it for 75. You can check out more on the website, www.dorothyenriquez.com. Just click the link in the bio and mosey on over there and just scope it out. Scope out the scene, let me know what you think. Um, but after the first 10 people, it's going back up to its regular price. But I am so excited, y'all. Let me tell you something. Another testimonial came through for the plug and I'm about to Go ahead and post it on the site uh, where people can get their digital copy. And let me tell you something. Listen, when we know that this is what we're supposed to be doing, even if we've got heart palpitations, even if we're a little scared, even if we're a little like, ooh, we still got to do what we're being called to do, right? And so if you know that you can cook your butt off and you know that you're called to help other cooks be great in the kitchen, so that we're not eating out so much, do that. If you know that there's women out here, you know, struggling to do these cornrows because they just never learned and now they have these little girls and they need to do their hair and you know how to teach them, do it, right? I know leadership, this is my jam, y'all. That is why I created this plug collection. I am so excited about it and I love helping leaders transform. Oh my God, I just feel like I have so many stories and experiences around helping leaders show up powerfully and remarkably that it just, I'm, I'm here for all of the magic. So mosey on over to the link in the bio, click it and just do a little exploring and let me know what you think. But the hard copy y'all is fire, right? It's mine. So I'm gonna take notes in it because it was my sample so I can make sure everything was looking right, but I cannot wait. I'm so excited about it. Yes. All right. So that was just, you know, my little, my little spiel about the ultimate leadership bundle, which is adding, hey, Joanna, hey, Alexis. You know, I had to put on my spectacles to see what was going on, right? So um, that was what I've been working on and putting together because a bunch of people asked about the hard copy experience and I'm like, 
I want to make it. I just don't want it to just be the hard copy. I want it to be like a whole situation. And then, of course, my initial concern was around like, well, what about the audio piece? How are we going to do that if it's a hard copy? So that is what I've come up with. The Ultimate Leadership Bundle, which is the hard copy. Ew, ew. The digital copy with the audio companion and a coaching session with me. Here's the thing. Look, like I said during the coaching session, right, when we're getting folks to align with the mission, vision, and bottom line of the company, the bottom line is to make more money. For us, we want to make more money. If you are a corporate hustler, you want to make more money. None of y'all about to be out here working for free. Not for what? If you have a family to provide for or you have a certain lifestyle that you like to live, you know, or you are getting ready to buy your first home or getting ready to buy an apartment complex, money is required, okay? And if we want to make more money, you know what is going to underpin all of that? Leadership. I don't care what no one say. The folks that make the most are the folks that understand their ability to influence. And that is what leadership is. It's influence. And if we can become a remarkable leader, we could change the game. We could change the game for ourselves. We could change the game for other people. And that's what the plug helps us do. It helps us conquer what's happening in here so that we can show up out here and just be like, yes, sleeves, yes, earrings, yes, puff. Like, I'm here to show up as a congruent, authentic leader and bring other people along. Because like I always say, mm, why be ordinary when you can be remarkable? I'm Dorothy Enriquez. This has been another episode of Day to Day with Dorothy. I hope you found something in here that's helpful, a nugget that you can just stash away in your back pocket or stash in your bra real quick. And, you know, grab it when you need it. If you liked this video, show the roll. Go ahead and share with a friend. Tell them that there were some great nuggets in here and that you think they need a coach and you've got a coach recommendation for them, whether it's me or someone else. And let's start transforming these managers out here in corporate America, even if the manager is you. All right, so I will pose for you just in case if you are technologically challenged like me, so you can take a picture and drop it in your feed or in your stories and say, ah, this was a great live. Easy breezy, right? So look, thank you so much for tuning in. Ew. Shoulder roll. <laughs> listen, listen. As we like go off the Instagram screen. Yes. Okay. That's all I have for you. I am sure the little baby is about to wake up because it was a mad dash to get ready for this today. But I hope this was helpful. I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye for now. All right, Facebook. You know you always get the last. Okay. All right. Until tomorrow.